I'm Sean Murphy. We have the pleasure to speak with Dr. Micah Inslee, the author of Designing for Situation. Uh, welcome, Micah. Thank you. I found your book uh, when I was researching and really looking for a better way on situation awareness, common operating pictures, and also in general command and control technologies. Surprisingly, uh, there's very little information out there and the stuff, the information that is out there is just really extremely military focused. And I found your book to be really a breath of fresh air on the subject. As a matter of fact, it's probably one of the only books I've found so far in, in writings on this that we can really apply to the corporate world. Thanks so much, Sean. Oh, you're welcome. So before we get started, can you tell us a little bit about you and how you got started and what led you to write the book? Um, certainly. Um, I've been working in the area of situation awareness for almost 25 years now. I originally did start working with pilots in the military domain, which is really where the term situation awareness came from. Uh, they found as far back as World War II that they had trouble with keeping up with the rapidly changing situation and all the information in it in order to effectively fly their airplanes. When I started working on this, um, I was working as a cockpit designer, uh, looking at, at developing advanced displays for pilots. And it really wasn't well de defined. Nobody really knew what it was or how we were supposed to support it. So that ended up starting me on a long journey of, of defining it, really developing a model for how people do situational awareness, what are the cognitive processes involved, what's hard about it, how do people who are very successful at it do it, and then using that in order to really inform how we do effective display design. Um, now, that was back in the mid-80s. Uh, since that time, the work has really expanded into a wide variety of other domains. We worked in air traffic control, command and control systems, power grid operations, drilling operations, uh, transportation, emergency management, really a wide variety of domains where people are challenged with this problem of keeping up with what's going on, understanding all of the data that's available, integrating it quickly in order to make very dynamic decisions in these kinds of environments. Um, I found that although we had done a lot of this research, um, I was still getting calls from people, though, who weren't really sure how to apply this to their system design problems. And so that's really what led me to write the book. Um, the book is written really directed at people who don't necessarily have backgrounds in human factors engineering or cognitive science. Uh, so it's for engineers and business people who really want to understand situation awareness in their environments and how they can really improve it for their operations. I found, I found in, uh, in our models too, our, we, we, our crisis management, incident management process uh, is really at the root of it is what they call C4ISR, and full spectrum of operations, which is the military model. And I found that the military research, or particularly over the last 30, 40 years, uh, has really has a good understanding of this nonlinear complex environment. The, they've, spent the, the, they've spent the money to really find the root of some of these problems and solutions to it. Um, can you just can you give us an overview, just a high level overview of the various sections in your book? Well, we cover a lot of things. Um, at the beginning, we really talk about what is situation awareness. Um, how does this work? Uh, what does this really mean? And and when I talk about situation awareness, I don't just mean um, having a lot of data, but we find that it involves three levels: one, knowing the basic information of what's going on, so having all of that data. But the second level of situation awareness that's really important is comprehension. Do you understand what that data means when it's all put together and integrated? Um, the so what of the information. And then third, and the highest level of situation awareness is projection. And we find that people who have very high levels of situation awareness are able to project, at least into the near future, what's likely to happen in the situation. And that allows them to be proactive decision makers and not just reactive. So that's hugely important. So we cover the basics about situational awareness, how this really works in the brain with our model, where people have problems with it. We call these the SA demons, SA challenges, uh, which are typical problems that affect people in a lot of environments, um, and where the errors really are, and then how people who are very good at it really do it. Where, what are the successful skills that are really important for situational awareness? So we give that basic background in the book. And then I have a three-stage model for how do you really improve situational awareness in your systems. And this goes from doing a detailed essay requirements analysis, first, first stage. Um, what, what we talk about in situation awareness is, is fairly generic in terms of how people do it. But what you need to perceive, comprehend, and project really varies domain to domain. So what a pilot needs to perceive, comprehend, and project is completely different than an incident commander responding to an emergency 
or a, a surgeon doing an operation. Um, the very specific things you need to perceive, comprehend, and reject, we have an analysis process for determining what those things are and specifying them in your environment. And if you're really going to do an effective system design, you really need to know specifically what it is that, that comprises situational awareness for any particular role. So that's the first stage of the process. The second stage is actually doing an effective system design. And for this, what we've done is develop 50 design principles um, that go from that, that backdrop of, of what it is that allows people to be good at this and says, how do we really embody those characteristics in a system design? So those 50 design principles lay that out. Um, and, it, and it specifies really how you deal with it from, from a general perspective. We deal with some common problems for situational awareness. We deal with things like uh, alarms. There are a lot of problems with over-alarming and uh, poor alarms in systems. We deal with um, automation and how to effectively um, support situational awareness with automated systems. We have areas on complexity. Um, there are areas on um, under, uh, the um, the information um, certainty and uh, confidence level in information, which is hugely important for situation awareness. And then there's an area on supporting uh, situation awareness in team operations. So building shared situation awareness in distributed teams, which is a significant component in many of these operations. So the 50 design principles really address situation awareness in all of those areas. And then the third and final stage is in uh, measurement. And I'm a big believer that you really need to be able to go in and, and objectively measure situation awareness uh, of your personnel working with their systems so that we can tell where the real problems are and we can tell where we need to go in and, and improve a system design. If you, you know, if somebody wants to sell you a brand new display and say, hey, this is the greatest thing, it's going to give you situational awareness, I always kind of say, well, really, you know, prove it. And we can go in and objectively measure and evaluate these kinds of systems to see where is this really helping you and where maybe does it have gaps that really need to be addressed so that you can make sure that your systems are effectively supporting SA. So the book really kind of deals across the gamut from what is situation awareness to the, the, the three-stage design process that we have in place for improving situational awareness. Yeah, I think the practitioners in the business continuity management field will definitely be enlightened on the whole aspect of situational awareness common operating picture. But in our industry, we also have lots of software that we use to facilitate that process. Right. And many of, the, many of the softwares that we see in the industry are just riddled with problems. And you just mentioned a few of the reasons for that. And I know we're going to get into detail in a little bit. Um, yeah. And it, it makes you wonder what the software is actually doing that's out there right now because they miss most of the points. Uh, before we get into really some details on um, situational awareness, if you wanted the listener or the readers to just to say, remember three things, just I want you to walk away. And if you're going to talk to the CEO of your organization or if you're going to be in a presentation, what would be the three points you want the listener or reader to walk away with? Three main points. One, there's a lot of good science that's been done on this topic. A lot of basic research has been done. We know a lot about uh, where, where people do well at it, where they have problems with it, and how to really effectively design systems to support it. So um, I would be hesitant to uh, just believe anybody who says they've got great software. You want to make sure it's really based on the science. So that's, that's point number one. Um, point number two is that we have a really good process for how to design systems, and there's a lot of good research on what those techniques are uh, that can be applied to improving situation awareness in your system. And then the third point is it can be effectively measured. So you can really go in and objectively evaluate how effective a new system is for improving situation awareness. You can go in and evaluate how effective is the situation awareness with the systems that you have today. Uh, it can also be used for evaluating training programs, which can be applied to improving situation awareness. So I think there are a lot of tools and techniques that are available to the industry uh, if they want to improve situation awareness in their operations. 